Wallet. Oh, go on. Fall in. Oh, yeah. The return of the Tigers. Yorkshire takes on Lincolnshire, Tigers take on the Mariners as a Premier League pushing club takes on the FA Cup quarter finalists. Today we will see new players, the new kit and a ground tick. And with Hull City off the back of a 4-3 comeback win over Galatasaray, today really could be a goal fest. Yes, football is back as Hull City take on Grimsby Town in the first pre-season match in England. And I tell you what, I'm excited. It's been that long, I've forgotten how to do an intro. Now today is something special. It's the first game for Hull City in England and we get to take on our local rivals Grimsby Town for a new ground tick for me and a lot of special occasions as we see the new kit, some new players and the first Hull City match to have four quarters of 30 minutes. I mean, what is that about? I have no idea. Today, we take the short but sweet journey over the Humber Bridge and to Blundell Park in Cleethorpes, home of the Mighty Mariners. Now I'll tell you something, it is a pre-season friendly, so let's be honest, we don't want to sit here and waffle. I'm looking forward to getting back out there, seeing the Tigers for the first time this season and preparing for hopefully a playoff push season. Now I think it is possible, if you haven't seen Liam Rossini's interview when they bring him back into training, the amount of confidence that man fills me is immeasurable. What a man, he's bringing the club back into the right morals, getting the players down, working and ready for the new season. And that's exactly what we need to be doing for pushing. We don't want any of this lazy business. We want straight snap and back into the action. I'll see you when we get there. Up the Tigers and hopefully we get a goal fest. Weather's not up to suit. Oh. Proper old school, this. It's a bit wet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome from Blundell Park, home of Grimsby Town. Now, before we get into the game, I think we should talk about the stadium itself. So the stadium is fantastic, proper old school, holds 9,000 people, used to hold 30,000 but due to every stadium after the Hillsborough disaster having to move to all seaters, it had to reduce its capacity by three times what it used to be. But it's still beautiful, it's still old school, and it's proper Brexit football. I mean, you compare these to some of the championship grounds, I'd probably say this is better. Now the game itself is very strange and I'm not sure how it will work. There's four 30 minute halves, so I presume we'll be doing first team, academy players, under 18 some of them. I mean, the amount of players that have been here and got into the stadium, there's about 30 or 40 players. So it's going to be fun to see them all play and in action for possibly the first time. For example, I've never seen Jake Leake play before. I've never seen people like Tim Latala play. So it'll be nice to see a few fresh faces and hopefully cement themselves into that whole City squad next season. Now the time is exactly two o'clock, bang on. We're looking forward to it. It's an hour till kickoff. The lineup has just been announced and I've got to admit, there is a slight name on there that I've never heard before, Trialist. Now usually Trialist you sign for the academy, under 18s, give them three or four games to prove themselves to sign for the academy, but never in the men's team and especially not at a championship level. I mean, who could it be? I mean, usually Bas Cooper's spot on and he will tell us if there's a new player training or if we're linked to somebody. But the only players I can think of is Ruben Benagre and this player who possibly was signing from Turkey who used to play for Doncaster. Now, there's no links. I haven't seen him get off the bus. So who it is, is a mystery. Maybe it's an academy player or maybe it's a misprint on the lineups on Instagram. Now, another major point we should talk about, and I usually don't because if a player misses out of the squad, it could be because they're injured or they're sick. There's been no update. And due to Jacob Greaves linked to a move away to Syria, I should probably tell you he hasn't got off the bus and he's not in the lineup. So I don't know whether he is moving, whether he's sick, whether he's injured. We don't know, but it is a little bit scary. I mean, any player linked to a big team like that, you are going to get nervous. It was like Keen Lewis Potter all over again. I mean, you hope to keep him, but you know he's too good for the club and you know you can get a lot of money for him and he'll probably play better in a Serie A team where he can play with Tamari and play under Jose Mourinho. I mean, that would be fantastic for Jacob. He deserves the world. He's a fantastic player, a fantastic person. But hopefully we can keep him next season and push into the Premier League. But without further ado, I mean, I've been beating around the bush for the last two minutes. Let's get into the lineup. Here's your lineup to take on Groomsby Town. 
In goal, Matt Ingram. Today's right back and captain, Louis Coyle. The two centre backs are Sean McLaughlin and Andy Smith. Left back, I, pre I presume it's Trialist. I don't know. In midfield, Regan Slater, Jean Michel Serry, Harry Vaughan, and up front, Oscar Estepinian, Liam Delap. And the mighty Aliar Syed Manesh. Well, today we're joined by Ollie. It's been two months since the season ends. Are you glad to be back? Yeah. Good. Now, first of all, I've had a good summer. Yeah. Good lad. Now, are you optimistic today? Pre season friendly against Grimsby, anything could happen. Yeah, What's your score prediction? It's going to be tough. It is going to be. Three two to one. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, brilliant. Now, I'll tell you what, Ollie is right there because this is going to be a lot tougher than we expect. I mean, Grimsby got to the quarter final and only missed out to a close game against Brighton. Anything could happen today. Now, for me, I think it's going to be a draw. And I say that because obviously we should be winning against League Two. But when I went to Peterborough last year and lost 3 0, well, I didn't lose. Hull lost 3 0. I'm not as optimistic in pre season friendlies. I think it's going to be 2 2. And I think Oscar and Liam Delap to score. Wow, wow, wow. If I'm not mistaken, I think I found out who that trialist is. Running behind Louis Coyle, Ruben Vinagre, on loan from Sporting Lisbon. 15 million to buy him. Used to be at Everton, used to be at Wolves, a Premier League player, won the championship before. He hasn't been announced yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Who thought we'd see this today? Right, we're joined here by Harry. I mean, I've seen you all over the place. I was stood next to him at Norwich. What a guy. First of all, have you had a good summer? Great, man. Fantastic. Now, first of all, you look at the team, we have a trialist on our team, but we found out it's uh, Ruben Vinagre. What do you think of that appointment? All right, I reckon. Yeah, he's a I very good player. Well. <laughs> we haven't seen him play, yeah, but hopefully. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Now, for the game itself, are you optimistic? 100%. Brilliant, that's what we like to hear. What's your score predictions? 8-1. <laughs> Beat Huddersfield. 100%. Fair enough yeah. to you, mate. The atmosphere has started. Wow. And here we have it. Hull City take on Grimsby Town in a pre-season friendly. The atmosphere is like nothing I've heard before. Better than a lot of the championship games last season. It's mental here. Packed out and wave crowd. Ready for the new season. And what a lovely kit that is. Amber numbers. Blue kit. I'm excited. Come on City. And it will be the striker for Grimsby Town to take kickoff. Hull City shooting towards the uh, atmosphere in the second quarter. I don't, I don't know. Will we stick with two quarters? I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Come on, City! Well, in that! Only problem is Greg is not here. <laughs> Only the one notable number change as Sean McLaughlin takes the departed Figueroa's number six. I think he sues that very well. What a ball going, Liam! Liam's up! Oh. Very soft. First pitch invasion of the season. <laughs> oh dear me. Oh. 15 minutes into the match and before we talk about the performance I think we should mention the crowd it's been on another level today it really has been magnificent I mean we're really underrated as a fan base I would say we're probably one of the best in the championship we pack places out and I don't want to hear this free travel malarkey because we as a fan base are fantastic hang on we nearly just scored and that moves perfectly onto the performance dominating it I mean we must be we're three leagues above them but that's not the point we haven't made any mistakes we're passing it so well we're keeping possession and we're playing the risky passes which are working at the moment I suppose that could be a negative I mean some of the passes around the back have been very shaky and it does scare me but it's pulled off so we can't complain I'm looking forward to the rest of this 110 minutes Ooh, well in my Quickly, quickly, not quickly. Come on, Ruben. I think it amazes me that he was playing Champions League football not that long ago. Playing against Grimsby away. 
Yeah, you got hold back in your door. Can't get much better than that. Oh, well in that. Quickly. Now, I love Matt Ingram. I think he's a very good keeper. But I think we need to make the decisions. And I don't know whether it's been Matt Ingram being instructed, instructed to be doing it. But we need to hit them on a counter-attack. We've got the pace up front. We've got Aliyah. We've got Oscar. I mean, the beasts up front, they will be able to run and hit them on the counter-attack very well. But we just hesitate and we hold it and let them get into position and it just turns into a mess. 25 minutes in and there's four notable players missing from the squad. We've already talked about Jacob Green, but Adama Traore, Greg Doherty and Ryan Longman are nowhere to be seen. Now Adama, are you up? Adama is crucial for next season. Now Greg Doherty, we all thought he was going to be leaving. He was crying on the pitch at Luton. Maybe that or he's got A fever, we don't know. But then there's Ryan Longman as well. Is he going to cut it out in the championship? We don't know. He hasn't really been given much of a chance last season. He's been hit and miss with injuries and been on the bench. So we'll give him a proper running, but it's nowhere to be seen in pre-season. This is the main chance to get players who don't play often a chance to prove themselves. It's all very fancy. I'm watching it from a balcony. Go on, Liam. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. Ball in. This man here has been very solid, Andy Smith. He was on loan to Grimsley last season and did very well. I think we need to keep him around the squad and give him a good chance next season because I think he could be the future of Hull City. And again, I think people write off Louis Coyle too much, but he's been fantastic. I think it's been very difficult for Lima Senior to pick a lineup next season with all the options we've got. And there we have it, the first quarter. Of... It feels weird saying. Well played City. Quarter time then and <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. I mean, we all thought there'd be goals and there hasn't been. It's been it's been one of those. I think we're just getting used to the surroundings. We've been playing well and we've been dominating. We've only had three or four chances to be honest with you. And Grimsby at times have looked like they have got the ability to get a few goals. In terms of standout performance, there hasn't been too many. Andy Smith for me has been very solid. Ruben Bernagre has been decent. But then again, he was playing Champions League football only a couple of months ago. So you expect him to be good against players. You know, these could be academy groups with players for all we know. Now for me, the one player that deserves at least another one or two quarters is Liam Delap. I mean, he hasn't had a sniff in. He hasn't had the opportunities. I can only recall one chance where the goalkeeper got it before him. And as I'm saying that, the team's walked back onto the pitch and it's the exact same squad. No substitutions. I'm losing my voice. We're already halfway into the first half. Oh dear. I'll see you all in a minute. At least we switch ends, we get to see a goal maybe at this end. Or maybe none at all. It could be a nil-nil draw for 120 minutes, who knows? And it will be Oscar Estepinian to take in the second quarter. And I've just read something, my mum's just shown me that apparently it isn't Ruben Benagre at left back, it's some guy called George Cox. I ain't got a clue what's going on. It looked like Ruben Benagre. But again, I've only seen him from maybe 30 metres away. Sorry to take. Ball in. Oof. I've made myself look like an absolute tart on camera. I've been calling him Ruben Benagri, getting so excited over our new signing. And it's not even him. It's a player called George Cox on loan from Brighton. Played for Fortuna Sittard last season in the Netherlands. You know, I mean, it looks like him. From 40 metres away, you can't really tell the difference. But he's been playing well, and hopefully we can sign him as well as Ruben Benagre. Oh no. Oh no. Aliyah's down and it's not looking good. We've called the medics over. Uh, I hope. Oh, no. <laughs> hopefully he's okay. This is this will be heartbreaking for him. I mean the injuries he had last season impacted him heavily. He needs a full season because he is an absolute fantastic footballer. That's good. He's okay. Oh, sorry, mate. I mean, Grimsby have got a fair few decent players. And I think they'll do really well this season. That's a foul. Come on, Ray. 
exactly what they deserve. The medics got a round of applause. And if it wasn't for them that last season, we would have been absolutely knackered. I think every player had some sort of injury last season. I can't recall a player who's played every single game. A very dangerous free kick opportunity for Grimsby. And I'll be honest with you, they've probably been the better team in this second quarter. Tell you what, it wasn't a bad effort either. Go on, Harry. Go on, Harry. Take him on. Go on, Liam. Shoot. Oh. Uh, it was a good attempt. Oh, Harry, what a ball. Ooh. Come on. George Rubin, whatever your name is. You're playing well. Liam. Shoot. Oh. Come on, City. No, I'll tell you what, Liam Delap has been excellent this quarter. I mean, we're about 20 minutes in, so I don't know what it is. What, 50 minutes into the game, and he's finally found his feet. He's found the movement. He's always working to try and find an opening to get the pass through. And he's always putting everything. And Ali has offside. Well, Liam Delap deserves credit. He's been fantastic. Now, from the looks of it, that corner right over there, far inside, looks quite decent. I mean, the atmosphere looks quite good. I've seen them stretch their arms out and clap a bit. But if they were over there, or up there, the atmosphere would be a lot better because there's banter between the clubs. I mean, with Hull, they put the noisy stand, the north stand, next to the away fans, and that's what creates atmosphere. I think other clubs... No, I don't know why I'm giving advice. What, what am I going to do, honestly? <laughs> Ali, uh, go on, Ali. You can hardly see because the net's there. But he did something well. Sorry. I think we need to be more creative with our chances. We're passing it too much. Just have a wallop. Oh, go on. Yes! Come on. <laughs> Regan Slater. Come on. I mean, I'm not going to go mental because it's pre season. What a well worked goal that was. Fantastic piece of passing. Finished off by a Regan Slater tapping, but they all count, and that's what matters. We're playing excellent, and we deserve that, we really do. Let's keep the momentum going to the third quarter. Get a couple more goals. The atmosphere is 100% going to kick back up now. Get back to how it was at the start. Oh, I thought it was going to be another nil nil then. And there we have it. Half time, I suppose, in the grand total scheme of things. 60 minutes remaining. And we've already got our team warming up for the second half. And what a team that is. Ben Tete, Ozan Tufan, Xavier Simons, Alfie Jones, Ryan Woods. Oh, Ryan Longman is there. My mistake. Got Cyrus Christie, Jake Lee, Tom Nixon, Brandon Fleming. What a team that is. And that's our second team. Well, I would say Ozan's probably first team quality. I mean, the atmosphere is still class, and we're in half time. Shows the improvement. And I remember going to a game last season, and we couldn't even fill a quarter of our stadium. I know I'm in a pre season friendly, but you can still see the massive difference. Well, half time then, or whatever, second quarter in. We're about halfway through the match. And I'll tell you what, that Regan Slater goal, although it was a tap in, you look at the things before that, that Liam Dallat flick. I think it's George Cox, that cross. You know, you have to look at the things beforehand and it was an incredibly well-worked team goal. Uh, a lot better than what we were last season. I mean, I use it all the time as an example, but under Shotter, we couldn't string three passes together. Now we're creating some of the best goals you'll see in terms of teamwork and passing it around. Now, by how the substitutions are warming up, I do think that we'll be playing a completely different squad in the second half. So I can't really judge and say what we need to do in the second half because it's going to be another 11 different players. Tim Tyler will be going in net. I mean, from what I've seen against Galatasaray, he was fantastic. I know he conceded three, but he's very good at shot stopping, especially with his feet. And he's very energetic, and that's what we need. We've got a young goalkeeper who's wanting to play for the club. He did very well on loan last season for the last eight games and I think we give him a good chance. He could potentially be our first choice keeper in two or three seasons. I know I briefly mentioned it when the players came back out 
But it is not Ruben Bernagre, it is George Cox. Now, George Cox came through the ranks at Brighton, spent last year at Fortuna Sittard and did quite well. He's been linked to a few championship clubs like Blackburn and he's on trial today. I'm not too sure if that means we won't be signing Bernagre because he will be in that left back position. But hopefully we can get both. And then where does that where does that leave Fleming? Where does that leave Matthew Jacobs? You know, it's difficult. But I think George Cox has been probably one of the best players this half. I mean, for the goal, it worked very hard. The cross was fantastic. And I tell you what, even if we don't get Benagre, I'm very happy with this George Cox. And the Tigers are back out for the second half or the third quarter. The lineup is Tim Latala, Cyrus Christie, Ryan Longman, Ben Tete, Alfie Jones, Xavier Simons, Ryan Woods, Alfie Taylor, Brandon Fleming, Will Jarvis, and Ozan Tufan. Now another thing to point out is in goal for Grimsby Town is Harvey Cartwright on loan from Hull City. Although we want him to do well, we also want to score, so it's a bit of a difficult one. I think Liam would want him to play. Hang on, we're already through! Oh! And he strips over Will Jarvis. Oh dear. Now I'll tell you something, it wouldn't be a vlog without mentioning through this sausage roll is, is fantastic. <laughs> it really is, honestly, brilliant stuff. Fair play to Grimsby Town. Oh dear. Oh dear. How's your touch? And ball? And ball? No, can't do. Right, let's see this distribution. Fantastic. Another dangerous opportunity for Grimsby. Quite a few to be fair. Oh, what a pass. A oh, fair play. Oh, look at this. I mean, you have to say fair play to him. And now Ben Tete is on the floor. The medics come to see him. It does a little good. But then again, I said that for Ali, I only got up within a minute. So, I hold me breath. Bite me and by the looks of things, Ben Tete is up and he's walking. That's the main thing. Hopefully, he'll be all right to carry on. Well, in Tim. Well done, Tim. I must admit, there's not a lot going on. About that chance there, and Ryan Longman's open goal miss. Nothing's happened. I must give credit though to the guy at the back of the stadium hitting the wall as hard as he can, trying to make drum beats. I mean, he's been probably the highlight of the uh, second half. It just feels like a completely different game to the first half because it's two different teams. But hopefully things can liven up with the two chances in two minutes. Hopefully we can improve. We're on the counter attack now. Let's wait and see. It's ironic because he's not even on the pitch. Ball in. Grimsby have had the better chances so far this half. Quarter, minute, wherever. Corner flag taking some FD beating, innit? It's all over the park. Well, that's the third quarter done and over with. <laughs> I couldn't tell you one thing that happened. In a very, very boring quarter. Hopefully, we can make a few subs, mix things around, and get back on our feet and get the atmosphere going. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what I can say at the end of the day. There's not a lot going on. I mean, they told the attendance and there's 1,500 old fans, which is just incredible. I mean, we've nearly got half as many as Grimsby's taken at home. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to this season. I think we can really do something. I mean, hopefully with the team that we started with, because the second team, although it's been good, I think there's one or maybe two players in there that will make the first team as in the first 11, it was a bit boring. Um, I think Alfie Jones and Tim Matala just shook hands halfway through. I don't know what was going on. I mean, Harvey Cartwright's been half decent. That, that's all I can say. It's a nice breeze, sunny weather. Looking forward for me tea. There we go. What a man Harvey Cartwright is. Taking time with the whole city fans, taking photos with the children. Really nice guy and I wish him all the best this season. I think he'll do well at Grimsby and hopefully he can cement himself in a whole city squad in the upcoming years. I mean, we've got about seven keepers, but I'm sure he's in the top three, maybe top four. 
and here we go the last quarter 30 minutes left try and get a couple of goals get the atmosphere rocking and go home with three points well we don't we can't get three points i don't know what we can a bit of pride and it will be ben tete to kick start the last quarter come on city at least we're shooting this way get a better view if we get a goal go on go on cyrus Good cross. No one there. Go on, Brandon. Well in, mate. Ball in. Oh! Yes! Get in. Well in, Ryan. Well in, Ryan. Go on, son. <laughs> Get in. Ryan Logman, he deserves that, that'll do a massive boost in his confidence. Wow, well we got the atmosphere back up, everyone stood up now. Everything was a bit sluggish and Let's go for four. I think we've turned a switch on in this second, I don't know, what is it? Second half of the second half. Come on City. And it's 2-1. A mistake by Cyrus Christie. Oh dear, well we're celebrating for them. <laughs> oh dear. Just want to confirm it wasn't Cyrus Christie, it was Jake Leak. I apologise Cyrus. Disgraceful scenes as the stewards have taken the uh, board away from the fans. And another news, Grimsby might even get a comeback on here. Oh They've taken another ball. What is going on here? <laughs> oh dear me. It's all kicking off. The board versus the stewards. Halfway through the last quarter then, and it's starting to pick up. We've got the battle of the boards versus the stewards. We've had two goals and the atmosphere is starting to pick up a bit. It's been a good day out. The weather has dramatically changed from walking into the stadium, wet through, to now getting a bit of a suntan. Hopefully we can keep this momentum, go into the first game against Norwich, and hopefully get a win, because it'll be a tough place to go, but we've still got three or four pre-season games against some very good oppositions. We've got Barnsley, playoff finalists. We've got FC Nantes, they'll be a good team. They've got Moose to Circo, and they've got Scunthorpe, which arguably is another rivalry. Another shaky error by the defence, and I'll tell you what, from being 2-0 up and comfortable, looking like we're going to win 3 or 4-0, there's a chance our Grimsy could come back and bite us on our mistakes. Then again, we could score another two, I mean, who knows? At least this quarter's been a bit more entertaining than the last two. Ryan. Bentete. Was that out? In. Will Jarvis! Offside! They don't know. The fans don't know who's offside. Oh, now they do. That's cutting for the lad. I mean, he scored against Fen uh, Sorry, Galatasaray. He nearly scored against our rivals. Second time this vlog made myself look like a right tart. It wasn't offside, it was out. I mean, how can you be offside when you're behind the ball? It... I don't know. I confuse myself sometimes. Substitution for Old City and Jay Cleek. Comes off the pitch and coming on, Tom Nixon. I feel for Jake, I really do. It wasn't really his fault. I mean, we all have mistakes and that one cost us a goal, but I hope we're still winning. And you cannot forget that magnificent performance against Galatasaray. What a player he is. And he's a big future at the club. I mean, fair play to Grimsby and the fans. They've been, to be fair, quite good. I mean, you wouldn't have thought this would be a championship versus league two. You'd think this would be championship versus championship. We played very well. That number 11 especially. Very good quality player. For me, league one, championship. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Well, this is it. The time has just ticked over 30 minutes, which means officially 120 minutes have been played. And there's one final opportunity for Grimsby Town to make it level. Oh, 
ball in. Ball out. That should be it now. No nope, corner. Oh dear. Go on, Ryan, get it out. Go on, Brandon. There we go. Hull City 2, Grimsby Town 1, a very competitive match. And to be honest, a well deserved victory. Well played, Hull. Well played, Grimsby. I wish you all the best for the upcoming season. Right, I'll see you when we get home. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, let's keep this short. A 2-1 win over Grimsby Town, our humble rivals, and fair play to them. They pushed us to the max. I think we played very well, considered that we played a whole different team in the second half or whatever, the last two quarters. But I think Grimsby Town deserves some respect because they did push his championship side right to the last minute. And to be honest, there was times where I thought they could possibly get the comeback. With the match being a pre-season friendly, I think we can take a lot of positives out of that. We've got a lot of the new young players out on the pitch, getting a few minutes in. We've got to see some of the players returning from injury, like Ben Tete, Aliar, Cyrus Christie's first match back in England after getting injured during last season. I think it was nice to see some of the players work well together, to see the new player, um, oh, completely blanked his name, George Cox. I mean, fair play to him. I mean, I've been calling him Ruben Vinagre for the full game. So I apologise on behalf of that. I think he was fantastic. And I think if we can't get Ruben Vinagre, go in for George Cox. We can get him on a permanent. I know he's wanted by a few championship clubs, but today proved why he can play for Hull City and he worked very well along that left-hand side. Firstly, thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please like, subscribe and turn on notifications. That would really mean so much. Secondly, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. The support you've been giving me recently really is heartwarming. I'm so grateful. Right, I will see you all on Tuesday night for Barnsley at home. It's going to be a tough one. They got to the playoff finals and to be fair... They did take Wednesday as far as they could and it was only to a 94th minute winner by Josh Windass that Chef Wednesday are in the championship. It will be close, but I am optimistic that we will get the three points and hopefully we get Ruben Vinagre in and a couple more signings beforehand. I hope you have a fantastic day and thank you. See you soon. Up the Tigers and what a win.